Hey everyone, in this video we're going to recap the different factors that affect how quickly a reaction happens, in other words, the rate of the reaction. What do you need to be able to do? Well, you need to be able to name, so recall, the five different factors that affect how quickly a reaction takes place, or the rate of a reaction. You then need to be able to describe how each of these factors affects the rate, so whether or not it increases or decreases the rate of reaction. And finally, and this is the one that people find the most difficult, is explaining how each of these different five factors affect the rate of reaction. Before we start, we're going to remind ourselves what happens when a reaction takes place. When a reaction takes place, two or more different particles need to collide. That means they need to bump into each other. Now, particles are colliding or bumping into each other all the time. It doesn't always lead to a reaction because not all collisions are successful. In order for a collision to be successful and lead to a chemical reaction, the particles have to collide with enough or sufficient energy. We have a name for that type of energy, it's called activation energy. So another way of explaining this is that in order for a reaction to take place, particles need to collide with activation energy. If they do this, new products are made. We're going to just pause the video now and do a quick checkpoint. I want you to read the question read the three options, pause the video for 15 seconds and make a note of your answer. Pause the video now, please. Now let's check your answer. If you've written one or two, then you've missed out something really important, which is that particles don't just need to collide in order to react. They don't just need to collide with some energy to react, they need to collide with sufficient or enough energy and we give that type of energy a specific name and that's called activation energy. So you should have written number three, check your answer now, pause the video and go back if you got one or two. There are five factors which affect the rate of reaction. The first one is temperature. It's important to remember that all particles have got kinetic energy. That means that all particles are moving. When we increase the temperature, that increases the amount of kinetic energy that particles have. That causes them to move faster and it causes them to move with more energy. If particles are moving faster, and they're moving with more energy, two things are likely to happen. The first thing is that they are more likely to collide, so there are more frequent collisions. The second thing is that it's more likely that those collisions will be successful because the particles have more energy. So when asked what happens if we increase the temperature to the rate of reaction, we would say that an increase in the temperature increases the rate of reaction because, and this is the explanation part, because an increase in temperature increases the amount of kinetic energy that particles have. This means that they move faster and with more energy, and this increases the frequency of successful collisions with activation energy. If we see this plotted on a graph, you'll notice that at a lower temperature, the curve is much less steep or the gradient is less steep. That's because the reaction initially is happening at a much lower rate. The second thing you'll notice is it takes longer for the reaction to end. So it takes longer for the graph to plateau or go flat. If we compare that with a reaction at a higher temperature, we'll notice two differences. First of all, the gradient of the line is much steeper.
A much steeper gradient tells us that initially the rate is happening much higher, so it's a much faster reaction to start with. The second thing you'll notice is that the line plateaus or goes flat much quicker, much earlier. That means that the reaction ends much sooner than at a lower temperature. Let's pause the video now and check our understanding of this. Here's our question. Here are three options. Read each of them really carefully. Pause the video for 30 seconds and write down your answer. Pause the video now. Now, each of these three answers do look and sound very similar. But if you've chosen number one, then you've missed out something really important, and that's the word successful here. Remember that particles are colliding all the time. For a reaction to happen, those collisions have to be successful. So we have to include the word successful when we're talking about collisions. If you chose number three, then you've included the word successful, which is correct, but you've missed out the word activation energy. Remember that an increase in temperature increases the amount of energy that particles have. Therefore, more particles are reacting or sorry, colliding with activation energy. So if you chose number two, that's correct. Look at how number two is different from number one. First of all, it says the word successful when we're talking about collisions. And notice how it's different from number three. It includes the term activation energy. If you got that wrong, pause the video, go back and listen to my explanation about temperature again. The second factor that affects the rate of reaction is concentration. So let's just remind ourselves what we mean by concentration. Concentration tells us the number of particles in a given volume. On the left, we can see a substance that has a low concentration. In other words, it's got a fewer number of particles in the same volume. If we compare that with the substance on the right, which has a high concentration, we can see that there are far more particles, a greater number of particles in the same volume. Therefore, there's a higher concentration. If you're in the lab and you were carrying out an investigation, you would be able to tell which substance has a high or a low concentration because it would tell you either in moles so using capital M or moles per decimeter cubed and that is the unit for concentration so if you're in the lab and you want to know which has a high or low concentration you would look for moles or moles per decimeter cubed if you were reading an exam question and you wanted to know you would look for those units in the question so how does an increase in concentration change the rate of reaction? So the first thing to note is an increase in concentration increases the rate of reaction. That means it makes the reaction happen much more quickly. The reason for that is that the particles are now closer together because there are more of them. If the particles are closer together, that means there's an increased frequency that's an increased number of successful collisions. Remember, we have to use the word successful. And in this case, if we compare it to temperature, particles are not gaining more energy or moving more, more quickly. It's just that they're closer together. So make sure in your answer you don't talk about kinetic energy and you don't talk about the speed of the particles, but you just talk about the distance between them. Let's check our understanding of this in a moment. So we have here a graph of rate of reaction and we can see that at a lower temperature, similar to with a low temperature, a low concentration, I'll start that again, um, at a lower concentration the curve is less steep and the curve plateaus or goes flat much later on. That tells us two things, one the curve is less steep therefore the reaction is happening at a much lower rate and two, the curve flattens or plateaus much later, which means it takes a lot longer for the reaction to end. At a higher concentration, you can see two things. 
First of all, you can see that the curve is much steeper, which means that the rate of reaction is much higher, and that the curve plateaus or the line goes flat much earlier, which means that the reaction stops much earlier at a higher concentration. Let's check our understanding of this next. Read the question carefully. Read each of the three options really carefully. Pause the video for 30 seconds and choose your answer. Let's check our answers. If you've chosen number two, then you've used the explanation for why an increase in temperature increases the rate of reaction. So remember, if we're talking about concentration, we never talk about kinetic energy. We never talk about how quickly the particles are moving. We also don't need to talk about activation energy. If you chose number three, then you've not used the word successful when talking about more frequent collisions. Remember that particles can collide often. It doesn't necessarily lead to a reaction unless they're successful collisions. So number one is the correct answer. Let's have a look at how number one is different from two and three. First of all, we've talked about increasing the number of particles in a given volume. And then secondly, we've said that therefore there are more frequent successful collisions. If you got that wrong, go back and listen to my explanation again. The third factor that affects the rate of reaction is pressure. Now, before we recap what we mean by pressure, it's really important to remember that only gases are affected by pressure. That's because particles in a solid and particles in a liquid are already touching. So we cannot compress a solid and we cannot compress a liquid. That means we cannot squash a solid or we cannot squash a liquid. That means we can't push the particles closer together because they're already touching. So often examiners like to throw in a trick question here and they like to give you reactants that are in a solid, a liquid or an aqueous state and they will try and ask you what will happen if you change the pressure. That's a trick question. The answer to that would be no change because the particles are not in a gaseous state. So watch out for that if you ever get asked a question about pressure. The only time pressure will affect a rate of reaction is if the particles are in the gaseous state. If they are in the gaseous state and we increase the pressure, that means that we have compressed that gas or squashed it. So if you look at the diagram on the right, that means that we've pushed the particles so they are closer together. If the particles are closer together, then that is going to increase the frequency of successful collisions and therefore increase the rate of reaction. Notice how this is really the same explanation as increasing the concentration, but we'd only use this for gaseous reactants. Again, we have a look at a rate of reaction graph, we'll notice that at a lower pressure, the curve is less steep, telling us that the initial rate is much lower. The reaction is happening much more slowly. We also notice that it takes much longer for the graph to plateau or the line to go flat, which means it takes us longer for the reaction to complete. If we compare that with a higher pressure, we can see the line is much more steep telling us that the initial rate is much higher, the reaction is much faster. And the second thing we notice is that line plateaus or goes flat much earlier, telling us that the reaction finishes or completes much more quickly. Let's check our understanding of this now. Read the question carefully, read the information carefully, and check each of your options carefully. Pause the video for 30 seconds and choose your answer. If you chose one or two, then you have been tricked because if you read the question really carefully in the information, we have got a powder and we've got an acid. The powder will be in solid form. The acid will be in aqueous form. Therefore, there are actually no gases present. Therefore, 
there should be oops, no change in the reaction. And the correct answer is three. The next factor that we're going to look at is surface area. Now, this is only relevant for solid particles. So first of all, let's recap what we mean by surface area. In a reaction, if we have large pieces of a particular reactant, so that might mean we have chips of something. So a common example is calcium carbonate chips, big chunks or big pieces. That means there is a small surface area. That means that there are fewer particles on the surface that are free or exposed and can collide with other particles. The more that we break that down into smaller and smaller pieces, the bigger the surface area. So if we take those big chunks or big chips and we break them down into a really fine powder, so really, really small parts or particles, then we've got a larger surface area. That means that there are more particles exposed on the surface and available to collide with other particles. So when we have reactions involving solid particles, if we increase the surface area, we increase the number of particles that are exposed to each other. This means that there will be more frequent successful collisions and the rate of reaction will increase. Just so it's really clear, this is what a l l small surface area looks like, so large chips or chunks. And this is what a much larger surface area looks like, where we've got a fine powder. If we look at the difference on the graph, at a much smaller surface area, so big lumps or particles or chunks of something, we again notice two things. First of all, the graph is much less steep at first, meaning the initial rate is much lower and the rate of reaction is much slower. We also notice it takes a long time for that graph to plateau or for the line to go flat, which means that it takes longer for the reaction to complete. If we compare that with a much greater surface area, so for example a powder, we'll notice that the curve is much steeper. That means the rate of reaction is much higher and the reaction is happening much more quickly at first. The second thing we notice is that line plateaus or goes flat much more quickly, which means the reaction stops or completes much quicker than at a smaller surface area. Let's check our understanding of that now. Pause the video and choose options one, two or three. Give yourself 15 seconds. Let's check our answers. If you chose number one, what you should notice is that when we're using chips, that means we've got large chunks or large pieces of calcium carbonate, which means our surface area is much smaller. So that means the reaction will happen at a much slower rate. If we have a look at number three, again, we can see chips. So the reaction will happen much more slowly because the surface area is much smaller. So the correct answer is two because we've got a powder. So key things to look out for if you're ever asked this question is the description of that solid. Is it large pieces or chunks or chips versus a powder? If you got that wrong, check your answers again by going back to my explanation. The final factor that affects the rate of reaction is a catalyst. Now, a few important things to know about catalysts. First of all, they are not reactants. That means that they are not involved in the reaction at all. They do not form new products. And at the end of the reaction, we can reuse them. So catalysts are not themselves used up in the reaction. The role of a catalyst is to speed up the reaction or increase the rate of reaction. And the way they do this is they provide an alternative pathway for the reaction to take place. That alternative pathway has a lower activation energy. That means that the reaction can happen at much lower temperatures, pressures, concentrations, and at much 
smaller surface areas. A common mistake that people make is they say this. Catalysts speed up the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy, which isn't quite right. So it's really important that you use this language instead. Catalysts speed up the rate of reaction by providing an alternative pathway for the reaction, which has a lower activation energy. Again, if we look at this on a graph, we'll see that without a catalyst, or if we use less of a catalyst, the curve is much less steep, meaning that the rate of reaction initially is much lower and the reaction is happening more slowly. We also notice it takes longer for the reaction to complete, whereas if we use a catalyst, the gradient of the line is much more steep, telling us that the initial rate is much faster, and we can see that the line plateaus much earlier so the reaction completes much more quickly. Let's check our understanding about catalysts. Pause the video, take 20 seconds and choose the correct statement. If you chose number one, this is incorrect because it says here that they are reactants that are used up in the reaction. And we know that that's not correct. Catalysts themselves are not used up in the reaction, they are not reactants, and at the end, they are available for us to reuse again. So number one is incorrect. If you chose number three, then you've made the common error, which lots of people make, of saying that they increase the rate of reaction by lowering activation energy. Remember, if we check number two, which is the correct answer, two things we need to uh, remember are that they are not used up in the reaction and they provide an alternative pathway which has a lower activation energy. If you got that wrong go back again and listen to my explanation. If you got it right we can carry on and start practicing each of these different factors. So we're going to now go through each of the five factors and practice how we would write a description and an explanation of how this particular factor affects the rate of reaction. So we're gonna do both the description and the explanation in one, and I'll point out which of those parts of the answer it belongs to which word, describe or explain for each of the examples. So we'll do a model example first, and then you'll do an independent example next. So for this, you're just gonna listen really carefully, and then I'm gonna ask you to write your own answer shortly. So a common question might be something as straightforward as this. Describe and explain the effect of increasing temperature on a particular rate. First thing we need to do is describe. So by describing the effect, we need to say whether or not an increase in temperature increases or decreases the rate. So the first thing I'm going to do is my description. Then I need to explain this. So remember, I need to be talking about if it's temperature, kinetic energy, the speed of the particles, and I always, in every single answer, need to talk about the frequency of successful collisions. Because this is about temperature, I also need to talk about activation energy. So read my answer really carefully. Now it's your go. Read that question carefully. And note that this time we've put the question into context. This is far more similar to an example that you might be given in an exam question. So this time we've been told about a reaction between marble and hydrochloric acid. We've been told that there's a higher temperature. So again, you're going to start by stating or describing the effect of this on the rate, and then you're going to explain why. Don't forget to use the terms kinetic energy, talk about the speed of the particles, talk about successful collisions, and to talk about activation energy. Pause the video now and restart when you've written your answer. So let's check your answer against the mark scheme. The next example we'll look at is concentration. 
Again, I'm going to model a really simple example where I describe, so I state the effect and then I explain it. Then you're going to have a go at doing one yourself. Remember, an increase in concentration will increase the rate. I need to remember if I'm talking about particles, then I'm talking about the number of the particles increasing. And I always talk about the frequency of successful collisions. Pause the video now and answer this question in your book and restart when you've finished. Let's check your answer. Again, we should be talking about an increase because we've talked about an increase in concentration, so the rate will increase. You need to have talked about the number of particles increasing. And then you need to have said that this leads to this frequency of successful collisions increasing. Make sure you've said successful in your answer. Next, let's talk about pressure. Now let's start with a really simple example and imagine we are talking about a gaseous reaction. So I need to both describe and explain how an increase in pressure changes the rate. So an increase in pressure causes an increase in the rate. And I need to, in my answer, talk about the particles, the distance between the particles and what that does to the frequency of successful collisions. So first of all, I'm stating that the particles are closer together. And as with concentration, this is going to increase the frequency of successful collisions. Notice how I've included successful in there. Let's have a go at an independent example. Read the question carefully. Write down your answer. Before you start, just to note, there'll be some different units of pressure that you might come across. In this case, we're using atmospheres. So ATM represents a unit of pressure called atmospheres. So we have two atmospheres versus 10 atmospheres. So in this example, they haven't necessarily told you if it's increased or decreased, but you can take that from the question that it's gone from two to 10, so it's increased. Pause the video now and restart when you've written your answer. So let's check. First of all, we need to state what will happen to the rate. Then we need to say why and explain using our ideas about particles. And remember, we're talking about pressure, so we're talking about the particles being closer together. And we always, always need to talk about the frequency of successful collisions. So my final point would be okay let's try surface area. Again we'll start with a really simple um, question and then you'll do a slightly more challenging one in a second. When we're talking about surface area remember we need to talk about the number of particles that are exposed and therefore what happens to the frequency of successful collisions. So if I increase the surface area, the first thing I'm going to say is then I'm going to explain why. So I've talked about there being more exposed particles. And finally, notice that frequency of successful collisions needs to be in all of your answers. Let's have a go at one on your own now, please. Read the question. And again, we've got the same question, really, but it's just put into a particular context. So we've got limestone or calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid. We've got some observations that the student has made, which is that it's a greater rate of effervescence, which means fizzing, which tells us that a gas is being produced. So the more effervescence or fizzing, the faster the rate of reaction. We need to be able to remember that powdered limestone compared to larger chunks is going to be a larger surface area. Pause the video now and write down your answer. 
OK, let's check our answer. So the first thing I need to notice is that if we go from using large chunks to powders, I've increased the surface area. Therefore, there's going to be an increase in the rate of reaction. Then in your answer, you should have also talked about exposed particles. And you should also have talk, talked about frequency of successful collisions. The final example we're going to do is catalysts. The first thing we need to remember is that catalysts always increase the rate of reaction. Then we also need to talk about this alternative pathway and lower activation energy. Here's an example for you to try. Read the question, pause the video and restart when you've got your answer. So the first thing we should have done is said what happens to the rate. We should have used the word alternative pathway. And we should have used the term lower activation energy. Check your answer now. If you weren't sure on any of those examples, or you'd like to go through that again, go back to the beginning of the video and re-watch the exposition. Good luck with your practice questions and thanks for listening.